Good morning, folks. We've got one of those days with a bunch of stories to hit. We'll start nearby and make our way out through the cosmos, beginning with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun very quiet. No sunspots, patchy coronal holes on the south, the northern polar extension reaching down here too. The solar wind intensification we showed yesterday peaked just afterwards. There was considerable variability to the stream, but the telemetry stayed in moderate range only. Took a brief moment of geomagnetic instability, but otherwise the field and geospace in general is quiet. Folks, the four shocks have ticked up the last day. We've had a number of mid five range events, some at blot echo depths, very much spread around the ring of fire, eyes on those deep rumbles and the atmospheric signals, and even the USA is seeing a bit of an uptick too. Earth is at its northernmost point in the solar system right now. We often see that lead into the higher magnitude events. Let's do some macro scale weather. First, looking at the minimum temperatures, the nighttime marks for the month of August in the United States. This shows an above average temperature month, but for the billionth time in a row, the nighttime lows are the global warming, not the heat of the day, which as you can see was far more balanced. It is like this every single month. It is not the daily highs. It is the nighttime lows. Stepping up to the polar vortices, the south is breaking down for the springtime. Bottom cell will take over and expand and halt the tight movements there. Meanwhile, on the north, we are coming out of that calm, still upper level pattern to find the first hints of the vortex flow building over Siberia. In another month, these will look completely different. Let's take a quick look at lightning. In addition to the cool graphic showing energetic strikes, they say that the strongest ones on Earth actually occur over the ocean in the northern wintertime. They say it actually starts in November. Interesting article linked for you below. Up next, we've got a little oops on an important discovery. 260 million years ago, we know there was an extinction, but they have now found basalt floods from massive volcanic events across the world at that time that tend to accompany the greatest extinctions. So perhaps this was one as well. All of that is legit. But sadly, they look at the volcanoes as carbon releasers and therefore have caused global warming catastrophes when we know that volcanic winter and ice extinction is what major volcanoes do. Same extinction event, same time in history, just the opposite mechanism for the volcanic action. Let's get off the earth here and go out to Titan. Folks, I'll have to get Billy on this one offline because they are now blaming underground explosions of gas on the major craters of the Saturnian moon. The crater lakes, they say, the walls of them, suggest explosions from below rather than impactors, and that is sounding relatively electrical. Let's head out next to the first of two looks at the Large Magellanic Cloud today. This first one examines the star clusters easily visible to us, and they utterly upend our understanding. While it was always believed that these clusters formed tight and then expanded due to plasma pressure, they now know it's the opposite, especially with the infall of the largest and heaviest stars. That's a total 180 of the science there. Up next, geez, you know Keck delivered some of the most important cosmological news of the last year, that the major plasma halos of galaxies co-rotate and that they're fed by helical vortex filaments of plasma from the cosmic web. Today, we are looking at something a bit more imaginary from Keck as a star they see running away from the Milky Way, they say was ejected by a medium-sized black hole. Forgetting the fact that tracking such objects from the plane of the Milky Way, where Earth and the Sun are located, is impossible. All sources are visibly polluted. But any one of the past galaxy mergers, like the one they think we had with the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, could also have been responsible for that runaway star. Can't hit home runs every time, I guess. Going out even further to the final stage of the gravitational wave event science, the afterglow. The most detailed and deep optical image ever has been produced of the region. The full implications and analysis are still to come, but for right now, these might not look like much, but these are actually incredibly impossible visible light images of a region a disgustingly far distance away. Kudos to the team. Let's come back to the Large Magellanic Cloud for our top story, the second time we've been here today, and the recurrent nova of the Milky Way satellite galaxy has now been pegged to a five to seven year cycle after its 2016 outburst. Two things. Of the dozen or so recurrent nova that we know, astronomers think that those are rare, with most recurrent nova having much longer cycle times that we don't yet recognize, with some having hundreds to thousands of years nova cycles that we haven't even seen go boom once yet. 
That's the mainstream science. Now, the second thing is that there is tons of evidence that our sun is a long period recurrent nova. The full examination of that, its trigger, and the effects on Earth is found in the Cosmic Disaster movie linked right below this video in the description box. That movie is a must watch and so is Plasma Cosmology, which not only touches on those Keck discoveries we reminisced about today, but it also sets up the trigger for the solar micronova. It doesn't really work unless it's a plasma universe. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.